Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Major Michael Yamamoto, and I have the honor of serving as your master of ceremonies for today's event. On behalf of today's presiding officer, the commander, United States Transportation Command, General Jacqueline Van Ovos, welcome to the change of command where Major General Stephen Jost will relinquish command of the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command to Brigadier General Michael McWilliams. The change of command ceremony is an American military tradition. Our great nation's first ceremony dates back to the 3rd of July in 1775, when General George Washington rallied the American troops gathered at Cambridge, Massachusetts. We have also maintained the Revolutionary War tradition of carrying distinctive unit flags, which served as a highly visible point that members of the unit could assemble to during the fog of war. As an important component of the unit, the flag was also used in the Continental Army's earliest change of commands. The organization's banner was exchanged in full view so that every soldier could see the officer now entrusted to lead them into battle. The modern ceremony is primarily symbolic, yet it still announces to all the transfer of authority from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. At this time, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of honors, singing of our national anthem and the invocation. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glass of bombs bursting in air gave proof
morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before we pray this morning, I offer you a reading of scripture. It is written in the book of Joshua, chapter 10. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand over Gibeon, and you, moon, over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jasher. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it, before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Would you please allow me to lead you in a moment of prayer? God, almighty and everlasting, we gather in this ceremony to honor the leadership of the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command. We pray that your spirit would abide with us as we celebrate and give thanks for the leadership of Major General Stephen Jost, who enabled his team and this organization to become more cohesive. A rising sun is mighty to the one who commands it. May you continue to bless him in his upcoming command with the strength and wisdom to care for himself, for his family, and the service members and families in his care. God, we give you thanks for the support of the Jost family and friends who have sustained him and nurtured him while he served as the Jack commander. We give thanks for Kelly, Jessica, and Aaron, and pray for the transition ahead. Lord, we also ask for your blessings upon our incoming commander, Brigadier General Michael McWilliams. We pray that you would continue to bless him before every task and mission, and grant him renewed endurance and resolve to lead us, and to bring even more light to all of our capabilities. May he be blessed in this command with the strength and wisdom to care for himself, for his family, and for the service members and families in his care. We celebrate and welcome the McWilliams. And we pray especially for Allison. Lord, may the sun never set on these two leaders until they have known success through this service. All this we ask and pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, Joint Communication Support Element Color Guard, YNT Lane, and Chapman Edwards. At this time, we would like to recognize our distinguished guests attending today's ceremony. I ask that you please hold your applause until all guests have been introduced. First, Major General Joe's wife, Lieutenant Colonel, retired, Kelly Joe's, and their children, Jessica and Aaron. Brigadier General McWilliams' wife, Ms. Allison McWilliams. The Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Transportation Command, Command Chief, Master Sergeant Brian Prezelnik. The Deputy Commander, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, Brigadier General Kimberly, Kimberly Hamilton. The Executive Director, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, Mr. Marshall Ramsey and his wife Amy. The Commander, Naval Station Norfolk, Captain Janet Days. The incoming Command Senior Enlisted Leader, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, Command Sergeant Major Lennon Castillo and his wife Misha. All general flag officers, senior executive service personnel, commanders, directors, deputy directors, senior enlisted leaders, jesters, friends and family joining us today. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. At this time, it is my pleasure to welcome the commander, United States Transportation Command, General Jacqueline Van Ovos. Ma'am, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning. It's, uh, it's great to be here with the incredible members of the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command. Today we bid farewell and celebrate the phenomenal leadership of Major General Stephen Jester Jose and welcome Brigadier General Michael Williams and his family into this transcom team. So thanks everyone for attending as we reflect on the events of the last two years by recognizing the accomplishments of Major General Jost and our Jet Professionals, uh, the unsung heroes of Transcom and the Joint Force. Let me first acknowledge uh, the outbound command team, uh, starting with the most important person, Jester's life, Kelly, Kelly, 
Um, thank you for your constant support and all you do for Jester's, uh, Jester and the men on the Jag. And thank you for your 20 years of service in our Air Force. Uh, Jessica, uh, congratulations to you. Uh, not quite grown up yet, but all the way at, at Baylor now. Fantastic, uh, congratulations. Uh, and Aaron, uh, who's uh, gonna be accompanying them to Japan, uh, rising, a rising sophomore now, football player, pianist, but not both at the same time. <laughs> uh, incredible, incredible. And I wanna uh, uh, welcome the McWilliams family, of course, uh, Allison, uh, thank you, thank you for your support uh, of Mike over the years, and now on the men and women of the Jack. And uh, we talked a little bit about your three daughters who unfortunately couldn't join us today because they're pretty busy on their own doing some pretty important things. Um, I'll speak a little bit about the Madeline, uh, a pediatric oncology nurse, uh, now in, in Cleveland. We talked about she's a little too far away. Uh, uh, Meredith, uh, with you, who's a who's, uh, financial analyst, and she's up in Delaware right now. Uh, and uh, the youngest, Morgan, who's uh, our second year of law school, which is amazing, just incredible. Uh, to both uh, to both of the families, I'm incredibly grateful for the love and support that you've provided these two gentlemen over the years, and I know that uh, your influence and sacrifice have not gone unnoticed. So thanks. Now, uh, reflecting on General Joe's time here, I'm kind of amazed as I look back at all the accomplishments and historic moments that the Jack has been involved in since he took command. It really highlights the amount of hard work and contributions that have grown the reputation of and their respect for the men and women of the JAG, wherever you go. So this command is essential to our nation's ability to project and sustain our power at a time and place of our nation's choosing, underwriting the lethality of the joint force and giving our adversaries a reason to pause and rethink the use of aggression. Now around the joint force in the Department of Defense, few units are called upon with such regularity to deploy in support of our nation's objectives. Even now, members of the GX Alert Force are supporting missions tasked by the Secretary of Defense around the globe. On any given day, mission tailored teams are deployed, deploying, or redeploying on every continent. Your dedication and skills makes you a powerful and agile force multiplier. And it's the reason you are part of our nation's immediate response force. So while most of your work is under the radar, sort of behind the scenes, you are absolutely relied upon by our Joint Task Force Commanders. Each of you is a specialist, from the Joint Planners to Public Affairs Personnel to Knowledge Managers, Intel Analysts, Logisticians, and Com Experts. You are all highly valued, respected, and sought after by everyone you support. No one else can operate at the speed and precision combined with the scale necessary to meet our combatant commander needs. Combatant commander needs. You are a rare breed indeed. Your exploits are made even more impressive by the fact that over half of the 1,500 Jack members are Guard and Reservists who have to balance the rigors of a civilian life and commitment to serve in this high demand, low density command. I'm humbled by the professionalism you display in execution of your mission, and I take every opportunity to shamelessly brag about this team wherever I go. The Jack's reputation and legacy is a testament to the talent of past and current members, but it's also a reflection of its leadership. Under Major General Joe's, this command has certainly excelled. With his deep strategy and operational background, he possessed the skills and experience to ensure that the Jack stood ready to launch at the forefront of many global operations, and the vision to shape the command to respond to future challenges, and responding to the SECDEF priorities, <coughs> by implementing the principles of the joint war funding concept. During Jester's tenure, tenure, he led the JEC personnel to support all 11 combatant commands with 24 real world alert force missions and numerous exercises on almost every continent. Few units, if any, can boast at having such a broad impact. His direction ensured that the joint force commanders supporting our critical missions to deliver missions to Ukraine, provide humanitarian aid to Gaza and to Haiti, and respond to numerous crises in the Levant and Sahil, that they all had ready access to the capabilities required for mission success. As an expert strategist, Jester understood the environment that we operate in is changing rapidly, and the threats to our operations are only growing. 
Acting accordingly, he led the revamp of the JEX Force Generation model, the concept of support, the concept of employment, all to focus on our ch pacing challenge in the Indo-Pacific. Jester's actions enhanced the command's credibility and placed it in a better position to respond to any challenge. And as he leaves, we can rest assured knowing that the JEC will continue to provide world-class enabling capabilities wherever and whenever they're needed. These examples just scratch the surface of the accomplishments and the praise that the JEC has received with Jester at the helm. He is certainly an exemplary leader. The Transcom team is sad to see the Joe's family leave, uh, but are excited for what you will accomplish as U.S. Forces Japan. To Brigadier General McWilliams, I'm sure you're proud to lead this high caliber group of Total Force Service members who exemplify a get it done attitude. I have no doubt that you're the right leader to take on this challenging position. The members of the JEC are fortunate to have another tremendous commander who is ready to build upon their, their legacy and recent successes. Joe McWilliams uh, was initially assigned as an infantry officer, then transitioned to serve as a logistics officer. He's deployed multiple times to Iraq and Afghanistan and commanded at all levels. Amongst his seniors and peers, he's widely respected as an expert logistician and planner, honing those skills at the Marine Corps School of Advanced Warfighting, the Eisenhower School, and also while serving as 2MEF G3 Future Ops Planner, and on the Joint Staff as the Deputy Division Chief for Joint Strategic Plans in the Exercise Division. He develops a strong understanding of the current strategic environment while serving as the Deputy Commander of both Marine Forces South and Marine Forces Reserve, where he coordinated with senior leaders, external commands, and government agencies on current and future operations, their capabilities, and force design tailored to meet the future challenges we've been talking about. He implemented C4I concepts to command logistics in a distributed environment and led logistics experimentation uh, supporting Marine Corps Force Design 2030. Most recently, he displayed flawless force generation, execution, redeployment, regeneration skills during his time as the commander of the Second Marine Logistics Group. And he and Allison are focused on developing people and supporting our families. In short, he's a combat leader with the right experience to lead this distinguished unit. Mike, I challenge you to leverage your experience and skills to further shape the command to meet the challenges of a rapidly changing strategic environment. We need JEC members who can provide cutting edge capabilities that will help maintain decision advantage and the credibility of our global operations. Mike and Allison, welcome to the Transcom team and congrats. The demand for JEC expertise is only growing and I have complete faith that you will do well in leading this command and supporting our families to ensure that our national objectives are met. Thank you all for joining us today, and a special thank you to the JEC team for your extraordinary efforts. Thank you. Together we deliver. Thank you, General Van Ovost. Major General Jost, please join General Van Ovost at center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the award presentation. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Defense Superior Service Medal to Major General Stephen F. Jost. Major General Stephen F. Jost, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by superior meritorious service as Commander, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, United States Transportation Command, Norfolk, Virginia, from June 2024 to July 2022 to July 2024. During this period, Major General Jost led the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command and two dispersed subcommands comprised of 1,500 active guard, reserve, and civilian component planners, public affairs professionals, joint communicators, and staff members to combatant commands and joint task forces around the globe. He enabled the command to provide decisive planning, public affairs, and communication packages and expertise to support the joint force and combatant commanders while executing a variety of worldwide joint contingency operations in support of the command's mission and the unified command plan. Missions included 24 alert force missions and mission tailored packages supporting the United States response to the Israel-Hamas conflict, 
Security Assistance Group Ukraine, and Joint Task Force Red Hill. Furthermore, General Jost spearheaded a comprehensive <coughs> pivot at the command, shifting priorities, training, and readiness to align to the national security strategic documents direction aimed at the pacing challenge in the Indo-Pacific theater. Moreover, General Joe's proactive approach to engagements with critical partners led to participation and leadership within the Global Information Dominance Experience Experiment Series and critical developmental support to the combined Joint All Domain Command Control concept and the Joint Warfighting concept. His persistent efforts resulted in a joint force that was more prepared, ready, and capable of rapid response to crisis in support of the national defense strategy and the national military strategy. The distinctive accomplishments of Major General Jost reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, the United States Transportation Command, and the Department of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our commander, Major General Stephen Jost. Sir, the floor is yours. All right. I love doing these things. I hate being on the receiving end, so. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, again, I echo the warm welcomes that were before mentioned um, you know, at the start of the ceremony to everybody. I usually don't try to do by names because I usually am uh, exclusive to somebody and that's never intentional. But I sincerely appreciate everybody for being here this morning, especially all the folks that have dressed up, uh, looking sharp this morning. Uh, you make for good pictures. And uh, it's honoring, obviously, to uh, Mike and I and our families and uh, General Van Der Oost, uh, as she officiates the ceremony this morning. And I just appreciate you taking all the time uh, to be here this morning. I do want to give one special shout out, though, to a trio of folks that uh, have stepped up on recent uh, short order, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Nelson, uh, Major uh, Lindsay, and uh, Captain Payne uh, have been leading the charge, uh, doing a lot of the coordinating and planning behind the scenes. Obviously, these uh, ceremonies don't occur without a lot of behind the scenes activity, a lot of attention to detail, and uh, again, it's a special ceremony uh, for me and Mike, and I just appreciate your leadership, and so thank you for that. But for them and all the participants that are before you and among you this morning, uh, please join me in a round of applause for everybody. best for last year, so why don't you line beautiful rendition of our uh, national anthem this morning. And thank you because, uh, again, you're not a jester. Uh, you uh, come from us from here at Naval, Nation, uh, Naval Station Norfolk again. And, uh, she was actually recalled her ship this morning. And then I got word literally before we walked in that she wasn't going to be here, but then she was here. So uh, she obviously was committed to us, uh, you know, supporting us this morning, which I think is a testament to her, her unit, and of course the United States Navy. And really appreciate it. It's a beautiful rendition of the national uh, anthem this morning. General Van Oost, um, you know, I, I gave you a note, but you know, publicly, I just can't thank you enough for your trust and confidence. Um, it seems like just you know, yesterday you were interviewing me, and you know, who knows how those go. But thank you for providing me with the uh, privilege, it's a privilege to uh, command the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command. Uh, you have been a rock steady supporter of not just our mission but our people. Uh, and the latitude you afforded me and us was what allowed us to align with the National Defense Strategy imperatives, and it was critical. Uh, you've been a calm and compassionate uh, leader and professional, uh, no matter the circumstances, you know, because if you think we've got issues down here in the JEC, I mean, multiplying by 
orders of magnitude when it comes to the other portfolio uh, items, you know, when it comes to plane ships, rail cars uh, in her portfolio. Um, no matter the circumstances, making the uh, hard look easy and uh, ever gracious, always armed with sage advice and kind understanding. Um, so please know that uh, personally you've served as a role model uh, senior leader for me and will continue to do so, uh, someone that I hope to emulate. And for all that, I will ever or forever be grateful. And again, on behalf of the entire JEC, uh, we just want to uh, wish you continued success as you lead the United States Transportation Command in uh, powerful and impactful ways with your team. Chief Kozonek, uh, you being her right-hand man, thank you for being here this morning and your leadership as well. Uh, always a pleasure to have you here as also. So thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, to be completely honest, uh, right up front, uh, mm -hmm. the JEC is is so much more special to me than I would have ever imagined it could be just a couple years ago. Um, you know, like many of you, like, what is it? What does it do? What's it all about? You know, I had to kind of build that plane as I was flying it as well. But I think it's safe to say that uh, love is probably not too strong of a word for how I'm feeling this morning for both the people and the mission. Um, and the simple reason is because of those two things, a full appreciation of the JEC's important purpose and the JEC's amazing people. Uh, so I could talk passionately for hours uh, about that, but I'm going to spare you and not do that. Uh, and I'm actually going to just conclude right there for the sake of brevity and full transparency. Uh, I think I'll just read you a letter because there's only really one more person I want to talk to this morning and it's uh, you know your incoming commander Brigadier General Mike McWilliams and I can do that because I've been graced by a couple of forums where I was able to talk to the Jexters and you know express individually and collectively how I feel um, but I'm just going to read you the letter that I wrote to him and um, I think it'll be all I need to say as I uh, depart the fix here this morning so, dear Mike, <laughs> uh, congratulations, okay, on your selection to lead the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, a unique and often misunderstood organization, yet one whose existence I believe is vital to the Joint Force. I hope you will soon make that same determination on your own, okay, and embrace a similar passion for promoting the unit's support. The United States Marine Corps has rightly identified you as a talented senior leader, uh, willing and able to do even more in positions of utmost importance in the defense of our nation. You are more than ready to take the reins of the JEC, and I'm honored to hand them to such a worthy professional of arms such as yourself. Have no anxiety, we talked about that this morning, ironically, about your new command because you will certainly not be alone in carrying out your duties. First and foremost, your family, okay, will continue to give you strength and inspiration just as mine has given me. Our family's sacrifices are often great. I know I would not be where I am today without the love and support of my beautiful wife and my two wonderful children. And without their even knowing, they have inspired me to become the best leader, officer, and commander I could be. And I hope in return my continued uh, military service has helped me to be a better husband and father for them. And I pray the same will be true for you. Your JEC command team is simply outstanding. Brigadier General Kimberly Hamilton and Mr. Marshall Ramsey are tremendous leaders. Okay, and I think together they are a well-balanced duo when it comes to propelling the JEC to new heights. I could not have asked for a better deputy commander or executive director. In a relatively short time frame, Colonel Robert Greiner is performing brilliantly as your chief of staff, as did his predecessor, Colonel Gary Raleigh. What a blessing they were in engaging in the often not so glamorous aspect of an organization's business to help keep my focus where it needed to be. While we've been without a JEC command senior enlisted leader for a good while, okay, since the talented Chief Master Sergeant Brian Bishop left us early last year, you will fortunately soon welcome to your command team one of the Army's highly renowned senior enlisted leaders, Command Sergeant Major Lennon Castillo. He's actually participating in the ceremony this morning and joining us today. Thank you for your trust in letting me select him to join your fantastic JET command team. Finally, just when I thought I couldn't get a better executive officer than the loyal, conscientious, and caring Commander Pete Wendell or Commander Vince Bovey, I got Lieutenant Commander Mark, uh, Mike Kessler. He is yet another dedicated and selfless Navy officer with, with noteworthy attention to detail, loyalty, and dedication. 
and I have no doubt he will serve you well. Uh, he's going to be hard to replace come this fall. I hope you will experience the same tight professional bonds with your entire JET command team as I have enjoyed. They never let me down while faithfully serving as my most trusted agents. One day, when the time is right, I will be fortunate to call them all dear friends, as evidenced by my former Wing Command Chief and now dear friend, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Christopher Mac McKinney, who's joined us here this morning. Your JEC staff may be light and lean, but they quite carry quite the punch. Collectively, they form the most efficient and effective team I've ever been a part of. They are all true professionals and fully committed to the JEC's mission. They willingly bring to bear their respective individual and combined expertise daily to enable our mission, solve tough problems, and embrace necessary change to keep the unit relevant in future warfighting. There are too many names to name, so I hope you will find the time to carve out the time to get out and about from your office and personally meet as many of the, your incredible JEC staff teammates as soon as possible. I know you'll quickly discover all the many amazing human beings that genuinely care about doing their jobs to the best of their ability while at the same time caring for each other. Jexters have proven to me time and again that they are truly grounded, as our value statement states, in integrity, commitment, and selfless service, deeply valuing our team, our distinct purpose, and the joint work life. With that said, the joint Planning Support Element Commander, the Joint Communication Support Element Commander, and your four Reserve Element Commanders, all present here this morning, by the way, which is unusual because the four of them are reservists, uh, are hand-picked and most capable O6 leaders. They are some of the finest officers I've ever served with. I tried my best to give them the same latitude I was afforded from my commander, and they all quickly earned my highest respect to lead their respective teams as they saw fit. I hope you will continue to trust and nurture them as they work hard to ready their forces within your commander's intent and a given resource constraints to appropriately respond when called upon to execute. They and their teams, your Jexters, get the mission done on time and on target every time. And I am confident the same will remain true for you on your watch. The United States Transportation Command staff under the leadership of General Van Ovos and her command team have been the best parent command I've ever served under. And I stated that yesterday, and I mean it, dead serious. They are supportive, responsive, kind, and proactive, and they have never turned down a request from the JEC for assistance, a reflective reflection of the leadership. I hope you will get to know the key staff at Transcom. You will again find amazing people that effortlessly and often make the very difficult look easy. And you could ask for no better advocate for the JEC than the United States Transportation Command. Finally, you also have the support from a seemingly endless customers, our customers. Today, I can say with the utmost confidence that more joint force leaders and warfighters know about and understand the JEC than was the case just two years ago, thanks to a concerted team effort executing a relentless campaign. This effort was a top priority that had my full attention, and I believe it has paid big dividends, tangible dividends, in forging key relationships across Naval Station Norfolk. Captain Days, thanks for being here. The combatant commands, <coughs> the services, the joint staff, the offices of the Secretary of Defense, the interagency, and many allies and partners. Close association with our mission partners is critical. The JEC runs on relationships, and I firmly believe that strong bonds and peace will enable JEC success in competition, crisis, and conflict. And that has been proven time and again, even in my short uh, tenure. At your earliest convenience, I hope you will personally meet the JEC's many mission partners where they are, however you can, to gain an understanding of their mission requirements. When called upon, I hope you will continue to get the yes on supporting their needs across the spectrum of conflict while further bolstering the JEC's readiness, relevancy, and agility to rapidly respond to emergent situations around the globe whenever and wherever they may occur. Not if, but when. Again, Mike, you are not alone. Have no anxiety. Please make the JET command your own this day and beyond. You have the reins, but again, with so many people supporting you, you won't need to hold onto those reins to anything I can do to help or support you and your continued personal success and the success of the JET team that is now and forever 
very near and dear to my heart. I wish you, Alice, and your family all the very best, always and in all things. Sincerely. Thank you. Thank you, Major General Jost. General Van Ovost and Brigadier General Nick Williams, will you please join Major General Jost at center stage for the change of command? The ceremony will begin as Command Sergeant Major Lenny Castillo passes the colors to Major General Jost for the last time. Major General Jost will then pass the colors to General Van Ovost, thereby relinquishing his responsibilities and authority. General Van Ovos will pass the colors to Brigadier General McWilliams, charging the new commander with the same responsibility and authority. By the authority of Title 10, United States Code Section 164, and Commander, United States Transportation Command, Major General Stephen Jost relinquishes command of the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command to Brigadier General Michael McWilliams by order of Jacqueline D. Van Orvost, General, United States Air Force, Commander, United States Transportation Command. Sensor, thanks. to the mission to supporting U.S. Transportation Command and the combatant commanders. 
and just thank you so much for the opportunity to serve alongside such wonderful men and women. For the Jet teammates, um, you have such an amazing history, a story history, and an amazing reputation. As we sit here today, we have Jetsters deployed around the world, um, and, and, and what you do every single day makes a difference. Uh, thank you for what you do. Uh, thank you for choosing something bigger than yourselves. Thank you for choosing a life of purpose. And uh, I look forward to getting to know you and serving alongside of you. For any man and woman who, uh, who does anything in this world, they, they don't do that alone. And, and so you've all heard the, the, the phrase, it takes a village. Um, mine just happens to probably be larger than most of yours because I need a lot of help. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank a couple groups of people that are part of my village. Uh, you know, without those folks in my life guiding me and directing me, I was intervening for on my behalf. But, but out of the love and support they continue to provide me and, and, and Allison and our children. For my friends and colleagues, so, so words are not going to be able to ever describe to you what our friends and colleagues mean to us. Uh, they, they have been supporters both near and far for, for my entire life, for, for our entire life together. And, and for those of you that are here, just know that you know, you're really special to Allison and I, and we would not be where we are today without you. Uh, and then last for my family, so my three daughters, General Van Ovo has talked about them, but, but they're not here this morning. They're my biggest fan. They're, they're the reason that I continue to serve and am able to serve because they've committed to this, this lifestyle. But even though they're out of the house now, they've committed to this, and, and they are why I was able to continue to serve. And then for my, my wife, Allison, uh, just thank you for everything that you do. Um, just so grateful for what you do for military families and communities um, and everything you do for me. And I love you. Thank you. For Major General Jost, sir, thank you for your leadership, your guidance, and, and direction over this turnover. Uh, you have positioned this organization so well for the future. I wish you and your family uh, fair winds and following seas as you head off to Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here this morning, for honoring uh, the, the Jack and, and the men and women who make up the Jack and uh, Silver Fidelis. Thank you, Brigadier John McWilliams. In lieu of flowers, Brigadier John McWilliams will be making a donation to the American Cancer Society on behalf of Ms. Allison Williams, McWilliams, in honor of her father, Mr. Paul Seymour. Before concluding our ceremony, the men and women of the Jack would like to extend their heartfelt wishes to General Jost, his wife Kelly, and their children as they depart the command one last time. And now, please stand for the playing of the Joint Service Medley and the departure of the official party. The words of the medley can be found on the back of your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of General Jacqueline Van Novos and the Georgia Naval Capabilities Command, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Please join Brigadier General McWilliams and his family in the reception room for a warm welcome. We invite all guests, especially those who are virtually attending this ceremony, to join us for refreshments here in the Pennsylvania House. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. All right. I was looking at the...